Hello, my name is Charlene. I'm the mother of Lauren Higgins. Lauren is an active drug addict and suffers from substance misuse. She has currently no home or hostel placement because she's lost another one. And she's on the streets of Belfast. And she's a very vulnerable adult. I'm actually shaking having to make this video due to what I've just been told. And I need help. I need Meg Nesbitt to step in. I need the Chief Constable of the Police to step in. And I need an act of God. Lauren is 25 years old. And because she's considered an adult, I'm finding it extremely difficult to get to anybody to work with me. Just for context, Lauren self-harmed at 14, went to comms, had social work involvement, was locked up in Lakewood, even though I told it couldn't be done, it was done. She was injected with heroin by a man named Luke Wadby when she was 17. This became a police issue. The police arrested him and the Sunday Life done an article. I had to reach out to the public before and Belfast Life picked it up and they helped. The public helped me because we were stuck for money when we needed to send her to the private rehab. And I know the public can help me again. I wasn't going to make a video today and I wasn't going to expose this in this way. But I am. Because somebody needs to protect my child. I put a complaint into the police service of Northern Ireland on the 15th of May and I set out a timeline of concerns reported to the police from her social worker in Extern, from the Welcome Centre, from me, from members of the public. I set this out and it was over 17 times between April and May, but the police service of Northern Ireland have no concerns. On Wednesday, I was on my way to work in Belfast City Centre and I saw my daughter lying on the street and I ran. I ran the opposite way because I don't want to find her. Lauren is still undiagnosed, but she is on a Seroquel prescription. She was also on a substitute prescription and I have no idea if she's still taking that because nobody will tell me anything. Lauren had a chance and she went to private rehab in Smarmore. She then got a relationship and she had a little girl. And this little girl is three years and a, three and a half years old. I'm not prepared to have to tell her and Lauren's 13 year old sister that she died on the streets. Lauren presented in front of the judge many times due to her criminal behavior when she's under the influence. She assaults people and she assaults police officers. Just recently, Lauren was taken from the bridge outside the Welcome Centre. But the Police Service of Northern Ireland have no concerns. I have contacted many solicitors in Northern Ireland to try and get her sectioned. But they told me it can't be done without a doctor. At this stage, I just need something to protect her. She presented to the Royal Victoria Hospital over a month and a half ago because she thought she was going to die. They detoxed her there and I spoke to the doctor and told him, please contact our social worker because we're trying to get a mental capacity assessment done. This is perfect opportunity, please. He stood with his arms folded and he stone faced me. I then asked him, will you at least ask her the safeguarding questions in front of me? Because I'm a trained mental health first aider and I just need to be sure. He asked her if she understood the risks of leaving the hospital after receiving this detox. Lauren started to tell him a story about when she was 14. I started to cry and I left. That night, the next, sorry, the next night, Lauren rang me to tell me that she had left the hospital. But she was fine and she was in, in outside her hostel sorry i'm shaking outside her hostel with men who were doing an intervention on her lauren was code red sexual exploitation on the police service system as a child she has been raped repeatedly she has been assaulted repeatedly 
The police service of Northern Ireland rescued her and brought her to the Mater after a serious assault by a group of men in the streets of Belfast. But they have no concerns. Her social worker from Extern has been absolutely phenomenal. Until now. This morning I got to speak to someone from Ward 15, purely off chance. I called into a local recovery group to see if there was going to be anything for mothers or families. And the guy told me that Ward 15 is definitely an option in Downpatrick, but not if she's hearing voices. Lauren disclosed, sorry, Lauren has a place in Wales at the Women's Centre. Um, Chris Killen, her faith-based support, has helped with that. But she disclosed to Amanda, who, owns, who runs it, that she's hearing voices. On Wednesday, I told Axtern this and I told him it was a public safety issue because of Lauren's history and they needed to call the police. The Welcome Centre went to see Lauren at four o'clock and reported that Lauren was fine. This morning, the person that works for Ward 15 told me that her key worker can take her to a &E, But her key worker said when she saw her yesterday, this is the social worker, Lauren wouldn't go with her. So I asked her, could she please go and ask Lauren the safeguarding questions and ask her if she was hearing voices and if that was the case to ring the police so the police could take her to a &E. I was told that she wouldn't be allowed to do that because they wouldn't have the resources. I then spoke to Chris Killen again and it was on my heart to contact Stephen Nolan because I don't believe that my child is going to survive on those streets. She took herself to the Royal to get help. That's not someone that doesn't want help. The problem is she can't maintain stability. She can go three or four days and then she runs. On Wednesday, Chris Killen, her support, went into the town and he saw her. And this is what he said. Charlene, it's the worst I've ever saw her. She was emotionally, physically and psychologically not well. And she was crying out for help. After I got that thought in my head, I rang the Stephen Nolan show. I sent an email and then I rang them. There's no answer to date. So, based on what I've just been told, I'm making this video. Because there's an attempt to cover up the failures of the system. And they're going to try and throw me under the bus. Because I told that social worker, I was contacting the Stephen Nolan show this afternoon. She has literally just rang me to tell me. Sorry, I have to read from this because I'm, I'm just all over the place at the minute. Lauren has a meeting on Monday with a substitute prescribing team in Malone. Lauren has been on and off a script. I asked her did Lauren make this appointment and she said no. There was a meeting this morning and that Lauren will see a CPN on Monday at Malone and be assessed. So I asked her, is this a dual diagnosis assessment because you've taken her to many appointments and the mental health people say it's not a mental health issue, it's an addiction issue. The Royal Victoria Hospital told me they couldn't keep her because it's a mental health issue. The Police Service of Northern Ireland, I have the recording of the call, have told me that it's a mental health issue. They can't help me. They don't have the resources, but they have plenty of resources to stand outside Stormont because I'm up there and I see them. I asked Ashley, did she ask Lauren? Was she hearing voices? And Ashley started to change her tone towards me. Ashley told me that my daughter is currently heavily intoxicated on the streets of Belfast and the police service of Northern Ireland were present. And she spoke to them and they were thinking about arresting her, but they decided against it. I asked Ashley, did you at least ask her the question? And she snapped at me and told me, I'm not a mental health worker. And I said, Ashley, you're a safeguarder. Did you ask her the question. She said she couldn't ask her because she's heavily intoxicated. She also just told me that she's been instructed now 
that they are going to withdraw all contact with me because Lauren is their focus. And when I asked her who's going to keep me informed, she threw this back at me once again. Lauren is an adult. My child is trapped in her teenage mind. She is not an adult. She's not carrying out life like an adult. She can't keep herself safe. This is all because I threatened to expose them. I'm not sure my daughter will make it to Monday. So please, if that Judge Stephen Keown sees this, you showed compassion. You can, you were concerned about her welfare and you asked the system what they were doing. Please, if you can help me get a protection order, I don't even know. I don't even know what can be done at this stage, but I just need somebody to protect her. Because even if we put her somewhere, she's going to leave. I have to now go and compose myself and try and pick up my granddaughter. Who's going to ask me again? Granny says, my mum ain't getting better yet. Honestly, I'm just in shock. I'm just in shock. I have been fighting so hard. When I get into the court, if a court will hear me, I have evidence. I have everything. I've got everything from my own solicitor. I have timelines. I have everything. I just need somebody to hear me. The system helped destroy my child. And now not only are they washing their hands of her, they're telling me that they won't talk to me, her legal next of kin. Because Lauren's their focus. Lauren hasn't been their focus. I will be exposing everything properly in a studio. I no longer care what anyone thinks of me and my family. If I didn't have faith in my, my family and my church around me, I would be dead. So please, I'm going to put a picture up with this link. Please, if you see her, please, will you just tell her her mommy loves her? And I'm trying. Oh, please, God, just help us. <laughs>